Next Basic Course, Chapter 3, Bus Devices. This chapter deals with the principal design and functions of KNX devices. Abbreviations. The here listed glossary of abbreviations is often used in the context of KNX bus devices. You will learn their meaning on the following pages step by step. PEI – Standardized Connection Interface between Classical Bus Couplers and Application Modules BTI – Same as above, but only for Siemens devices BCU – Bus Coupling Unit – Self-Explanatory AM – Application Module – The part of the bus device which makes up its function TRC the part of the BCU that deals with transmitting and receiving bus telegrams. Today it is only an ASIC. In the past it was a small electronic board inside a BCU. SR – Shift Register In some applications data between AM and BCU are exchanged by means of a shift register. DAC Digital Analog Converter is required if a separate dimming ballast has an analog control voltage input, such as 0 to 10 volt DC. RPP, a feature of the TRC chip, prevents the electronics from being damaged if the bus wires plus and minus are mixed up to reverse polarity. OS, Operating System the core software in a BCU. And that's how the bus communication works. The commanding unit, here a push button, also called a push button sensor or simply sensor, sends a message to the bus when pressed. In our sample it is light on. The corresponding actuator receives this message, analyzes it and then carries out the command. It closes the contact of its relay and so turns on the lamp. The flexibility of the push button's application software makes it possible to configure it for a lot more different functions. So you have always the same hardware which can control various types of actuators. Another sample for it is blinds control as shown here. We learn two important keywords now. Group address and communication object. The picture shows an analog sample from the traditional world of electrical installations. Load and operation unit are connected via junction boxes. In these boxes the hookup wire from the rocker switch meets the lamp wire on a screw or cage clamp terminal. In the KNX world you might call the junction box a group address and the two connecting wires as communication objects. All sensors and actuators linked to the same group address are virtually paralleled. This kind of telecommunication can be compared to an American mailbox system. The sender or sensor puts a new message into its outgoing mailbox, the KNX communication object. Like with an American mailbox, the send flag is put up. The operating system of the BCU of the push button recognizes this and generates a data telegram on the bus. Because the target of this message is not a specific device, but a group of devices, this makes the name group address, all of them will at first receive the telegram. Then they will compare the destination group address to their own address table. If they find a matching address, the received information will be passed into the corresponding target communication object. The receiving flag is put up. This makes the BCU to convey this information to the application module, respectively the application program, which now will execute the received command. Another comparison to the real world, which should make it easier to understand how the system works. Imagine you sit in a pub already for a while. Now your glass is empty. The pub owner who knows his business recognizes it and shouts 
who wants another drink, whose glass is empty. Please analyze on your own now. Who is sensor? Who is actuator? What is the group address? And what could be the communication object? Here's the solution of the little quiz. Have you identified our keywords in this real-world situation? Sensor, pub owner. Actuators, guests. Group address, empty glass plus thirst. Communication objects, the brains of the involved people. They send, receive and process information. Communicating bus devices can be also called subscribers, but we stay with the wording bus devices. In principle, they consist of an application module and a bus coupling unit, connected by the PEI. Often these parts are already assembled and fixed to each other by the manufacturer to form one single unit. Then there is no accessible PEI anymore. Internally, however, it still exists in some way. Where can you find bus coupling units? How can they be recognized? On the flush mounted ECU you can see PEI, program button and program LED. The same is true with the rail mounted version. Here are PEI, program button and LED. Both BCUs are the so-called universal classic type which once were sold by all KNX manufacturers. They would have been exchangeable with each other in principle. But the manufacturers didn't want this, having clear reasons for it. It is simply a question of liability for warranty claims in case of a malfunction. Therefore, these BCUs eventually vanish from the market. At the two other devices you can't see the bus coupler anymore directly as a separate part. This is, however, also not required anymore by the KNX standard. These are complete bus devices which still have program button and LED. Bus coupler BTM. In order to overcome the disadvantages of the classical BCU, see technical data on later pages, Siemens has developed a new BCU type, the bus transceiver module, also called bus coupler BTM. Viewed from far, it looks like a classical BCU, but at a closer look, you'll find out quickly. Significant parts of the classical BCU are missing. The BTM neither has a program button nor a program LED. And it also doesn't need them. In this BCU, only the data conversion between bus and application controller is performed. Therefore, it is named transceiver, an artificial word combining transmitter with receiver. So there can't be a functional limitation in the application due to the limited memory space of the classical BCU anymore. This BTM now is used as universal interface for all new Siemens operation interfaces, such as push buttons, displays or temperature controllers since 2008. In the Gamma training kit, we use them for the push buttons of the Delta I system series, which have application dependent different memory space with an individual controller. If required, it is also possible to use one of the new flush mounted actuators instead of the BTM. The BTI allows to connect the operation interface with the actuator, then having two independent controllers with two individual addresses. Let's now talk about the principle of a sensor, to be more exact, of a push button sensor. This sample shows the simple rocker function. The push button has two single buttons, which are grouped to a rocker. Therefore, we call it a push button single. Other manufacturers who refer to the number of buttons call it a push button double perhaps. Therefore, it is always important not only to compare names, but also the hardware directly. I start at the right side. There we have the application module. 
It has the two push buttons and one LED. When you press one of the buttons, you close an electrical contact and change the voltage on one of the signal pins on the PEI. The bus coupler registers this change and starts the program routine assigned to it. So if the right button is pressed, a telegram with the user signal value of 1 is sent to the bus and with the right button the opposite value 0. Later you will also learn in detail how the complete telegram looks like. This procedure is typical for a sensor. A certain event on the user interface makes the bus coupler to send a bus telegram. We look at the left side. There is also the opposite communication direction. A bus telegram is received with the information switch on status LED. It is at first processed by the bus coupler. It finds out which PEI pin controls the status LED on the application module, then turns on power for the LED. This procedure now is typical for an actuator. Although we have a push button sensor, here the status LED is an actuatoric component. From now on you will meet such combinations almost on every bus device. This is also no violation of the principle of KNX to strictly distinguish between actuators and sensors. Although the push button has both, there is no rigid connection between sensor and actuator part. The push button will not directly operate the LED. It has a communication object and therefore all other bus devices can also control it. Push button functions general. Let's have a more general view at the KNX push buttons. In contrary to the classic installation push button or switches, a KNX button can be assigned an almost unlimited number of function types. The information sent to the bus by the BCU and which communication object type is required for it is defined by the application program. This program, on the other hand, also rules how the operation of the buttons are interpreted. You may use your own fantasy. For example, there can be a distinction between short and long button operation. There are also applications which count the number of operations per time unit and so create different function telegrams. You know this from your computer single or double click of the mouse buttons. Another option is to send two telegrams per operation. The first when depressing the button, the second after releasing it. The user selects and configures his push buttons. In any case, the KNX push buttons are much more universally usable than their classic siblings. This also means a much easier planning, which and how many push buttons are to be used. You simply need to summarize all required functions, for example per room, divided by the number of buttons or rockers of one single device and that gives you the number of devices. No distinction as for the types of switches or push buttons like interrupting, changeover or crossover switch, dimmer or blind switch is necessary anymore. Actuators, the load switch. The counterpart of a KNX push button sensor is a switching actuator, or even more general, the actuator. Here you see a possible configuration of such an actuator. The here visible communication objects are today the minimum or the default configuration of switching actuators. Internally, this actuator naturally also consists of a PCU and an application module. But as most of these category of devices nowadays are compact devices, a PEI isn't visible. But still, the integrated PCU must communicate with the bus application module. Moreover, when you look closer at this actuator, each of the switching channels 
has for one the expected actuator function, if it receives a telegram from the bus. On the other hand, this channel also can report if the status of the switching relay has changed. This is an active status feedback, and since the actuator sends it by itself, which is the reaction to an event, it is a sensoric function. The minimum scope of communication objects you can see here are usually widened up in many actuator applications by further objects such as logics, interlocking, counters for operation hours and switching cycles, energy consumption, current and voltage, etc. You can see that KNX actuators also offer much more functionality than their classic siblings, the remote controlled relays and the contactors. A concrete example, the Siemens switching actuator N53X. The wiring diagram looks quite unspectacular. But what you can recognize in it is that the relays are independent from each other. So the actuator can also operate on different phases. It has bistable dry contacts, which can keep their condition in case of bus voltage or net voltage failures. They also can be driven to a certain position in case of bus or sometimes also net voltage failure. A neutral connector is also not required. The device is fed only by the bus as for control purpose.